Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Full Moon in Leo Guided Releasing Practice. I'm Phaedra. Uh, I'm the astrologer and artist of Mystic Physic Astrology, and I use Western Sidereal Astrology in my practice to help you kind of reconnect with your soul purpose and remember why it is you you came into this life to begin with. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. We are um, uploading this one after the fact, and I apologize, it is a little bit late. Um, we'll maybe get into those uh, details as to why in a few minutes, but first I want to welcome you to the broadcast and thank you for joining me. And I do apologize uh, that this video is a little bit late. I'm going to go ahead and get my windows all situated here so that I can see what's going on as we do the broadcast live. Not live, actually. <laughs> we had trouble doing this live, and so this is kind of a a backup emergency <laughs> plan podcast. Uh, but my aim really with these broadcasts is to offer you guidance on how you can consciously use the energy of the transiting planets to affect life in a positive way. And so the idea is learning how to respond to our transits rather than just react to our transits. And tonight, thank you for joining me. Uh, what we're going to be doing is exploring where each of us might be avoiding leadership which is where our true power lies. Uh, we're going to be exploring the ways in which we might be giving away our own power instead of stepping into our power through leadership, which is uh, one of the ways that we can tap into our power. Uh, and we're going to explore releasing what no longer brings us pleasure, what no longer makes us happy. And so I want to invite you to grab a pen or pencil, bring your sidereal natal chart, your favorite beverage, your intentions uh, to let go of things that are no longer serving you uh, for this opportunity to really initiate some change and to make some space to welcome the new into your life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you need to look up your sidereal sign placements, please use the easy online calculator at mysticphysic.com slash sidereal tools to find out for free. So what we do uh, at the full and new moon uh, broadcast, the first part of the broadcast, we spend uh, looking specifically at the astrology of this lunation. Uh, second part, part two of the broadcast, we dive into what house the newer full moon falls into for each of you according to your sidereal rising sign. This is why you want your uh, Fagan Bradley zodiac. We're working with the rising sign specifically. Uh, and then in part three of the broadcast, we explore the archetype and the themes of the sign the moon is in. And then we uh, delve into some prompts to use to uh, explore as we uh, initiate with the new moon or release and let go with the full moon. So welcome, welcome, welcome to part one of the full moon in Leo uh, guided releasing practice broadcast. So our full moon exact February 27th at 13 degrees, 55 minutes of the Fagan Bradley Zodiac at 8.17 in the morning. That is Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, of course, when we're talking about the full moon in Leo, this is one that the sun rules but because it's the full moon, the sun is in Aquarius, opposite the new moon, right? And the sun is in detriment in Aquarius. And so that's our, our starting position for every full moon in Leo. With the sun, the ruler of the sign, in detriment. Um, so this particular full moon, I wonder if I have the chart super handy or if it's buried in a stack of charts that I have been looking at because I was just also putting together my notes for the Serial Insights Astro Update broadcast. Oh, I do have it right here. Oh, man. Lunar chart. So... This is kind of an interesting full moon. We have a lot of things going on at once. And... It's a little mixed, I would say, in how I interpret the chart. There's an opportunity with this full moon to be spontaneous, uh, which is fun, right? Especially when we're talking about within the social sector, which is Aquarius, right? 
Um, so I want to invite you to have an antenna up, be aware and be receptive to sudden insights or strokes of genius that may come along with this particular full moon. There's an opportunity to shine in social activity or in social settings, but I would invite you to do that responsibly, of course, because we are still in the middle of a novel pandemic, no matter where you are in the world, we're still dealing with this. And so I invite you, if you're going to tap into that social energy, please do it responsibly. Spontaneity is really, spontaneity is really um, kind of at a peak with this full moon. And it can make us socially attractive, which speaks a little bit to courage or confidence, right? Uh, but that's not necessarily the same as impulsiveness, right? Spontaneity is not necessarily the same as impulsiveness. And that's where I think impulsiveness in general is where the sun and detriment can potentially show up and manifest and bite us in the, in the butt, right? Uh, but I would, uh, I would say that you could take an impulsive step towards manifesting a long-held hope or dream, especially one that you hold in association with your Leo house, wherever that falls in your sidereal natal chart. Um, you can use your creative mind at this uh, full moon to find novel and unusual or inventive ways to socialize, to make new friends, to tap into that kind of social networking type of energy, or to coordinate group activities. So think creatively. If something has disappointed in love or in a money matter, transform your approach. That's the opportunity you have at this full moon. Have an antenna up for in insight or inspiration into whatever this is for you or what it has to do with. Um, and insight and inspiration into the potential path forward for you, the potential path through it. During this full moon, you may be granted the opportunity to well, not maybe. You really are because of the configuration of the chart. You're granted an opportunity to realize your desire. And so what's important at, at that point is that it's incumbent upon you to take action to realize your desire. Okay, so there's the potential, there's the possibility for it in the chart configuration for this full moon. But you need to take action to realize your desire, right? That's that's uh, coming down and playing in the clay in the dirt of the mundane world, right? So in other words, to fulfill your desire. So I would encourage you, speak your truth, stand in your courage. These are appropriate things to be doing right now at the full moon in Leo. Uh, and that pretty well wraps it for talking about the astrology of this full moon in particular. So we're going to move on to part three. Excuse me. We're going to move on into part two. And here in part two, we're going to do a quick rundown of which house this falls into for each of you according to your sidereal rising sign and what the themes of that house are in case you need a refresher. For Aries, of course, working with the natural zodiac, this would be a fifth house full moon for you, which of course relates to creativity, children, love, and romance. The fifth house being uh, what the sun and Leo naturally rule in the zodiac, creativity, children, uh, Love and romance, but not marriage, right? Not committed long-term relationships. The the romance and the love part of it. The part that engages the heart. Uh, partnership is Venus's domain. The heart is the sun's domain, right? And so we're talking about things that we do for fun and pleasure. Things that we enjoy. Uh, this can include hobbies, uh, creative endeavors, sports, risk-taking, gambling. Things that you make with your hands, uh, anything like that. Things that you enjoy spending your time doing. For Taurus, of course, this is a fourth house full moon for you. So home or property related, family, parents, potentially the later life. Okay, this relates to real estate and residential status when we're talking about the fourth house. For Gemini, it's a third house full moon. So that has to do with travel and communication has to do with uh, travel and communication that happen local to you. So within your community, within your neighborhood, within your immediate environment. And the third house also relates to childhood education. It can relate to teaching, uh, can relate to commerce. It relates to um, your peers, especially uh, your neighbors, 
your brothers and sisters, your siblings, your extended family, like aunts, uncles, and cousins. And then for Cancer Rising, this, of course, will be a second house full moon for you. So second house is earned income and expenses. It's your wealth and possessions, your movable assets, the money that you earn from the work that you do uh, in your daily life. Uh, your expenses, the, what you pay money out towards. For Leo, of course, this is a first house full moon. So this has to do with appearance and self-expression. It has to do with your personality and your identity. It has to do with the role that you play in the world and how you show up in the world. For Virgo, it's a 12th house full moon. So the 12th house, of course, is privacy and seclusion, right? It's the things that we do outside of the public eye when we're in withdrawal from uh, society from the world at large, from public life, it has to do with spirituality and the unconscious mind, our unconscious beliefs, and a full moon in the 12th house is a fantastic opportunity to let go of unconscious beliefs, childhood beliefs that no longer serve you, okay? It's also the house that addresses our escapist tendencies, our addictions, it relates to solo projects, and privacy and seclusion, relaxation, self-care, uh, the spiritual journey, those sorts of things. For Libra, it's an 11th house full moon for you. So friends, organizations, hopes and dreams, all of that. Uh, your social life, the social sphere, networking, social activities, and group, uh, group projects, group activities, uh, things that you do as a collective. For Scorpio, it's a 10th house full moon. So this has to do with career and uh, professional life, has to do with achievement and awards, accolades, has to do with recognition and status, has to do with your reputation as well. Uh, for Sagittarius, this will be a 9th house full moon. So international affairs, travel, immigration, publishing, broadcasting, things that um, might engage folks across long distances or your dealings with uh, folks from other cultures, including your role as the foreigner when you travel long distances, uh, higher education, legal matters, religious matters. These are all ninth house as well as uh, philosophy. Uh, Capricorn, this will be an eighth house full moon for you. So this, of course, has to do with uh, other people's resources that are at your disposal or not sometimes they're not at your disposal right has to do with things like investment earnings or insurance premiums or insurance claims taxes that you owe or tax refunds that are due to you has to do with bonus or commission income if you earn your money those ways inheritances um, estates wills things like that uh, also relates to the occult death rebirth transformation so cycles of life and death can be related to eighth house themes also things like psychology research investigation anything that requires a deep dive into digging up secrets or hidden information okay for aquarius this will be a seventh house full moon for you so this is related to partnership and marriage this is related to business, uh, it's related to your relationships with other people in general, including open enemies. Uh, when we're talking about the descendant, which is the point opposite the ascendant, it can be specifically about what we reject about ourselves and what we tend to project onto other people. Uh, for Pisces, this will be a sixth house full moon for you folks. So that of course relates to work, health, daily routines, schedules, habits, pets and employees, if you have either of those. And that really wraps it for part two, uh, running through the houses and rising signs. We'll move on now to part three. And here in part three, what we're going to do is talk about the Leo archetype and themes of Leo. We're gonna get into some prompts that you can use as you prepare for your guided releasing practice. And so Leo is fixed fire. Uh, when I try to uh, kind of give folks imagery on how you can envision this or the, to get a sense of Leo fixed fire, this is like banked coals, right? Leo rules the heart. You've heard the phrase lion hearted, right? And it's ruled by the sun. 
And so this is why as the natural ruler of the fifth house, he also rules love and activities that we do for pleasure because this describes our lifelong love affairs, right? With people, with our hobbies, with our interests, with activities that we are passionate about. And that's exactly what Leo is about. Leo is about passion in that sense. Okay. Now, Leo is the archetype of the artist, the actor, the king, the leader of the people, the golden child. This is an energy that desires recognition. Okay. So this can be where we have a strong need for love and attention. Uh, it is uh, uh, suggestive of a sunny disposition. Okay. And this can be where we have our most intense creative urges in our Leo house. Okay. Leo describes our creativity, our problem solving abilities, our leadership abilities, and our leadership style. Leo embodies the will. Okay. So in the area of your life, governed by the house that Leo occupies in your sidereal natal chart. There are some prompts for you to consider as we uh, write out what it is we want to let go of or move beyond at this full moon. So beginning with the low hanging fruit, what don't you love anymore? What is something in your life that no longer brings you pleasure in the way that it once did and yet that you continue to do or keep or give your attention to in some way? Something that is no longer serving the purpose of bringing you pleasure, of bringing you enjoyment, of bringing you happiness, of filling your heart. And to what or where in life are you giving away your power? Are you giving away your will? Are you going against your will, your personal will? Where are you resisting or avoiding leadership? This can be a tough one. Where are you resisting or avoiding leadership in some way? And why? What fear or other thing is holding you back here? Something to be diving deeply into with the full moon in Leo. What have you created that you're resisting putting out into the world? What are you putting off creating because it would mean putting yourself out into the world, right? Being a leader. What is the source of your stage fright? Where are you afraid to enter the spotlight? We often liken the sun in astrology to being what is illuminated. It is where the sun is, is what is in the spotlight, right? And what happens when we're thinking about or talking about like a stage production, something of that nature? Where the spotlight is, is where your focus and energy go, right? That's where your attention tends to go, is where the spotlight is. And of course, there's a reason for that, right? But sometimes what needs to be in the spotlight is us, right? And that's what Leo is about. That's why Leo enjoys the attention, enjoys potentially being in the spotlight. So if you're hesitant about being in the spotlight or putting yourself in the spotlight or putting something that you've created and put your energy to into the spotlight, where am I? What is it that's holding you back from that? What is it that you're putting off creating because it would mean putting yourself out into the world, i.e. in the spotlight? What is the source of your stage fright? So write down what it is you are ready to let go of on your paper and just mentally prepare yourself to move beyond whatever this is, okay? Now, the full moon in Leo can also be a good time to metaphorically let go of someone or something that is outside of our control, responsibility, or concern. <clears throat> so, a situation uh, or other drama, 
Uh, it's an opportunity to release our attachment to the outcome. It's the opportunity to release our attachment to a condition. It's an opportunity to release our attachment to a circumstance surrounding a person or situation. Okay, so keep these things in mind as you sit with your paper. I'm going to grab mine. And what you're going to do is just write down what it is you are releasing with the full moon in Leo. I have to set my bowl out of the way here so that I have some room to write my notes. I don't want to burn my notes, right? All right, so everyone is going to take just a quick moment to uh, write it out what it is they're wanting to let go of for this full moon uh, lunar releasing practice. I am going to really quick just recap these prompts for anyone who might be joining us late. Ah, uh, gosh, Gemini rising, third house. Okay. So the prompts here. Consider what don't you love anymore? What have you fallen out of love with? What no longer brings you pleasure? And yet you continue to do, keep, or give your attention to in some way. A person, a situation, a belonging, a circumstance, a belief, a condition, a place. What or where in life are you giving away your will or your power? Are you resisting or avoiding leadership in some way and why? What fear or other thing is holding you back here? What have you created that you're resisting putting out into the world? What are you putting off creating? Because it would mean putting yourself out into the world, putting yourself in the spotlight. And what is the source of your stage fright? Okay, now everyone write down what it is. You're ready to let go of and move beyond uh, in this area of life on your paper. And then we're going to come back around and do the actual releasing practice. I'm all set. If you still need some time, take your time. I apologize that we're so late doing this for you all folks, part of uh, the new broadcast schedule that we rolled out earlier at the beginning of 2001 so that we would not have late broadcasts. And so this is where the first breakdown occurred. And I want to apologize. Um, it's too partly to a couple of things, primarily me getting knocked completely off schedule uh, over the course of last week. Um, due to migraines. I get terrible migraines sometimes, not so much anymore. But last week, uh, we had a series of snowstorms, well, snow events. I wouldn't call them storms, having grown up in North Dakota and Northern Idaho. I wouldn't call them snowstorms. But we had a series of snow events. I have noticed that my migraine activity is really related a lot to weather activity, and snowstorms are the worst. And so I do apologize because that derailed my ability both to do the broadcast in a timely fashion, but also to be ready for it um, and in a position to be able to uh, lead a full moon releasing broadcast. And so I apologize for the lateness of this, but I did want to go ahead and get it uploaded even after the fact so that you would have the opportunity to do this full moon in, leasing pra in Leo releasing practice because um, that's really, really important. And I don't know about how the rest of you have been feeling this, but this has been an incredibly emotional full moon for me. I wasn't really expecting it, uh, in part because it's Leo, although full moons at, can tend to be emotional. Right, because they are, the moon rules our emotional life, our emotional experiences, our emotional responses. And the full moon can tend to make us a little bit more emotional just in general. But I don't necessarily, I mean, I guess Leo has to do with what we love, right? And so in that sense, it has every right to be an emotional lunation when Leo is involved, whether it's a new moon or a full moon. Because uh, love is, I think, potentially one of the strongest emotions that we can feel as human beings. Um, for me, personally, the full moon, the moon itself, was transiting square, my natal moon. Uh, and I think that also triggered off a bunch of... Um, stuff that needed processing, I guess you could say. 
or at least just feeling, right? Because that's really what's the most important thing when it comes to our emotional experiences is that you actually acknowledge them and feel them instead of just like shoving them aside or stuffing them down. That's what creates unhealthy patterns in our lives when we don't acknowledge or feel or express our emotions our feelings Um, and so I encourage you to get real and get in touch with your emotional experiences in life and with the feelings that you feel practice naming them if you don't have someone that you can comfortably talk to about what you're feeling when you're feeling something you know get a journal or a notebook and write out Try to articulate, try to give some verbal expression to what it is you're going through. That can be helpful in the processing of things, even if you can't necessarily change your circumstance or change your situation or change your environment, whatever's causing the emotion, uh, you can at least give yourself permission to process it, uh, which goes a long way towards um, positive mental health, really, in a lot of ways. And so I encourage you to do that. Um, what I'm working with on my releasing practice has nothing to do with that though. So I'm taking the, you can, maybe you could say I'm taking the, the cheaters way out here. <laughs> um, because for me, I'm Gemini rising. So this works out to be a third house lunation. And so I'm taking it in kind of a, a, a not so personal or at least not so emotional direction with my releasing practice. Um, I'm thinking specifically in terms of communication, in terms of commerce, in terms of as a business owner, where I tend to spend quite a bit of my time and energy and focus and attention. And I'm thinking of a couple of ways in which I can be releasing where I spend that time and energy, what I give my attention to. Uh, in the effort of moving that attention in directions that maybe have greater direct benefit business-wise over a longer period of time, moving into the future, right? So third house, I wrote, here's what I wrote. Uh, There's two platforms that I use a great deal in my business. I use Etsy and I use Facebook. And I don't like being dependent on Etsy. I really hate Facebook (laughs) personally we can be honest I really hate Facebook and I would love to give both of them less time and attention potentially overall I mean I like Etsy as a part of my business I haven't been using it as much in the last year so I'm wondering is it really necessary do I need to have that as an essential piece or can I grow my business in other ways Facebook just as a matter of principle it's not my favorite place to be I find it a time suck um It's not the best investment of time or even social media presence for a business just because it's a content hole. It's like a black hole that you throw content into for Mark Zuckerberg, which he wants you to do for free. And then he wants you to pay to promote it. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) So here's what I wrote regarding Etsy that I release any attachment to or dependency on Etsy as a platform for growing my business, recognizing that all of the power of potential in my business is in growing the quality and the reach of my website, of course, mysticphysic.com. I ba- wrote basically the same thing about Facebook that I release any attachment or dependency on Facebook as a platform for growing my business or my audience, recognizing that all of the power of potential in my business is in growing the quality and reach of my website again, right? And so this is what I'm wanting to let go of uh, with this full moon is um, relying too heavily on either of those platforms when I know that there are better uses and investments of my time and energy, even in the same activities, right? So speaking of, If you're on Twitter, I'm starting as an individual, as a person, to be a little bit more active on Twitter, kind of learning the ropes. I mean, I've used it in the past, but I've never really been active on it as a user. I use it very much passively, kind of the same way I use my Instagram, which is pretty passively. And so I'm kind of trying it out, taking it for a spin, and uh, with an eye towards being more active on Twitter in an astrological capacity. So if you're on Twitter, Feel free to follow at Mystic Physic 
because I do have a Mystic Physic Twitter presence. And right now I mostly just post, you know, the same links that you get if you follow the Facebook page. Uh, if you're signed up to the email, uh, it's the same links that you get there. But I'm playing around with the idea of being a little more real time, a little more spontaneous, which this is a great thing for uh, using the full moon in Leo to do. Um, for tapping into that potential, right? We're talking about spontaneity being the theme of this full moon. Um, and I also um, am looking at different ways that I can uh, tap into the immediacy and the real-timeness of Twitter uh, to just give little astrological snippets as we move through the months from full moon to new moon and back. And so... I'm letting these things go, Facebook and Etsy and my attachment to and reliance on them. I'm letting them go with a heart full of gratitude because they really have been critical pieces in terms of growing my business and expanding my audience and my reach and being able to speak to all of you. Uh, I'm much more uh, have a presence now on YouTube because that's a place that can archive uh, what I do rather than Facebook where it's just like feeding a hungry baby, which I don't mind feeding a hungry baby, but I do mind feeding a hungry Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and so I am letting these go with love in my heart and gratitude for what they've brought to my business, which has helped me tremendously along the way as we started this whole experience. Now, when you're finished and you're doing your own burning, please do it in a fire safe place. Do it in a fire safe manner. Take it to a fireplace or fire pit or a barbecue uh, your kitchen sink, you have water right there. Just be smart and safe about it, please. If And as you are doing your, your burning, your releasing, state aloud your intention to release these things, these thoughts, these behaviors, these beliefs, your attachments, uh, the circumstances, the people, uh, the things you've outgrown. Um, and state aloud, along with your intention, that you're releasing them with gratitude because everything that comes into our life stays with us until we learn the lesson it's there to teach us right and so take the lesson with you and leave the rest behind and be grateful for the lesson that you were offered in the moment I want to thank you all for joining me. Invite you to please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can also uh, click on the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Um, I am planning one coming up for eclipse season. Which hits again in May and June. And so March is the leading edge of our coming eclipse season. We're going to have eclipses, uh, eclipse energy be active during the month of March at the lunation. So I'll figure out when to schedule that and I'll let all of you know. Uh, and if you're watching for it, you can catch it on the YouTube channel. That is youtube.com slash C slash mystic physic astrology. Uh, I also want to invite you to, if you're more of a, um, if you're more of a podcast listener, there's now a new Mystic Physics Astrology podcast. Uh, you can check that out at anchor.fm slash mystic physic. Uh, the podcast is available on all your favorite podcasting platforms, so be sure to give it a listen. You can also support the broadcast through Patreon. You can uh, offer a little monthly contribution at the level of your choice, as little as a dollar a month to help support the broadcast. And that is wonderful if you're able to do that. helps keep them free for general users. Um, and I do want to invite you uh, two more things to check out. If you don't have your 2021 Ultimate Astrological Planner, go to mysticphysicastrology.com slash 2021 and check out the full line of planners. They're available in uh, Fagan Bradley Sidereal Zodiac, Lahiri Sidereal Zodiac, the Tropical Zodiac. You can get them as day planners. You can get them as monthly planners uh, with your choice of covers, none of which uh, scream astrology or woo. Well, maybe one kind of screams woo if you want it to. But the rest of them are all really quite um, 
discreet for an astrological planner. And I also want to invite you uh, to check out our new Patreon uh, feed, Mystic Physic, uh, excuse me, patreon.com slash Mystic Physic. You can also support the broadcast at one of three membership levels and get access to some amazing exclusive goodies and pretty soon i don't have the date right in front of me but pretty soon coming up that will be the only place that you can join the broadcasts with me live will be through patreon but if you sign up uh, through Patreon for as little as $3.33 a month to support the broadcast, you will get access to some amazing free content and other goodies, including some of the guides that I've written, including calendar content, including uh, some free printables, some astrology uh, tools and tips and tricks. And uh, I just want to make sure that you're aware to go check that out and sign up if you would care to support us through Patreon. You can do that as well. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. And we will see you all again next time. Bye-bye.